from Forging Foundations. If you're new to my channel, I'm a former teacher turned homeschool mom. I have three children ages six, three, and 10 months old. You're watching the seventh video in the series following the theme back to school for the month of August. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I put together the first unit of science that we're using this school year. So let's go ahead and take a look. So today I'm gonna to be showing you the arthropod unit. This is the first unit that we are going to be using for our science curriculum. And we will be starting it at the beginning of September. So I will definitely be sure to have a video of us using it, a science lesson in the life for us, especially with a first grader and then littles. So the way I organized this was I did a few things. First off, I got the toolboxes for teaching kit for the arthropods. Now, this is the only unit that I actually got a toolboxes for teaching kit for this upcoming school year because as I was looking at the lists for the other units that I'm going to be teaching, which you can look at my science curriculum video from last week to find that out, but I saw that most of the things in the box that were included were things that I already had around my house, so I decided not to get boxes for those other units. However, for this unit, I did get the arthropods box. I did show this in my science curriculum video from last week, so be sure to check that out. I'll link it up top and below. Um, so I'm not gonna go into the box. What I'm actually gonna focus on during this video is showing you how I organized the unit itself. So for all my units, I keep them in one of these clear envelopes because they are easy to access and I'm able to see what unit it is just from looking on the inside. They have a Velcro um, closure and so I will make sure to link these below. They come in a set, I think, of eight, but I will double check and like I said, I'll put the link below. And so the way I am organizing these, and as you can see, a lot of these things are loose, is I'm having everything kind of separate. I have the mini books already cut out. They came in the set, uh, in the whole set that came together. I have the mini books cut out and already stapled together. And I put those, I didn't laminate those or anything. I just kind of kept them in the glossy, you know, paper that it comes in already. The other thing I have that I did was all of the loose pieces. Now, right now, I don't have these organized based on what lessons. I just kind of have them all put in this envelope, and I still actually have some to cut, so I'll be sure to show those to you in a minute. But I got, I went to Staples, and I had them all laminated. And I'll be sure to show you my receipt at the end so you can see how much the lamination cost in my area. I live in Northern Virginia, and so it might be a little more expensive here than it is in other places. But I basically got every loose leaf thing, I cut it out beforehand, I took it all to Staples, and then got it um, laminated, and then I cut them all out again. Because it didn't come cut separate like this, they don't do that at Staples for you. What they do is they laminate it in sheets like this. Now these are legal size, and that's what they charged me for, a legal size lamination. So as you can see, you are kind of paying for extra space that's not included, and this is where maybe if you have your own laminator, it would be more cost effective, but I don't have my own laminator, so I did go to Staples to have them do it. So as you can see, these are ones I still have to cut out, and I have another sheet I still have to cut out as well. Like I said, we're not actually starting them until next week, so I still have the rest of this week to work on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in this envelope. Now, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to organize them or not, because normally the night before I get out what I need, so I might just keep them all mixed together. I'm not sure, I'll let you know when I do get to that point. Another thing I got laminated was a double-sided uh, poster board, and actually these are not on here permanently. I actually have them on there using like putty for the wall. And so this is what I'm going to use as my vocabulary for the arthropods or any science unit. I just wanted to have a laminated thing that I could roll up or put away and hide away and then also hang on the wall when we're doing our science units. I, uh, we don't really have a place for it in our, li our living room, which is where our desk is. So I didn't wanna be putting all these things up on our wall where we normally live our normal lives and have to like take it all down. So this is just gonna be something that is portable. If we decide to do science outside, I can take this outside. And everything's kinda, of, like I said, stuck on with that little poster putty that goes on walls and everything. So it works like that very well. So this is another thing that I got laminated and these were some of the unit um, 
some of the unit vocabulary words that I already cut out just to kind of demonstrate how I plan on hanging those up. A few other things that I got laminated that ended up being the normal letter size um, were some of the poems, the life cycle charts, the f uh, more poems. So the poems, the stories, and the life cycle charts. And the reason I got these laminated is because I plan on doing this unit more than once over the next however many years of homeschooling I'm doing. And I wanted to make sure that they last long and I don't have to reprint these. So I got them laminated and like I said, they're gonna be nice and sturdy. I don't imagine these really getting really hard. And another nice thing is I can also test my student. Um, I could use dry erase marker and say which would be the first stage, which would be the second stage and have them circle it. So it had, it's kind of multi-purpose. Now I could have probably saved on lamination if I had them double sided, but I just didn't think about that whenever I was going to Staples. So that's another thing that I got laminated along with all the little pieces. Now all of those things I showed you were actually in the original package that I got from The Good and the Beautiful. So what I did was I pulled all of those things out, got them laminated, and then bound the rest of it together. Now as you can see I do have a few sheets out of the book that I kept out partially because I um, wanted to be able to copy them in the future. However, what I think I might do next time I put one of my books together is keep these in there. That way I know which lesson they're part of because right now they don't have that at the bottom and so I kind of just have to make sure I'm paying attention to the instructions at the beginning of each lesson to see which, which lessons these are included in. Now I did keep the answer keys for these sheets inside the book here, the course book that I created. So for those lesson or for those worksheets that do have an answer key, I'll know which lesson they go with. But like I said, maybe in the future for some of my other workbooks, for these I'll just keep them um, in the actual course book and copy it when I get there. I also did get the PDF version of this so I could easily print them from the PDF version so that I don't have to keep these separate. So in the book what I did was I actually got one of the clear covers from Staples and I got it spiral bound. I got a nice hard cover on the back and then I kept the cover sheet, kept the table of contents in here, and kept everything basically in order. And then what I did was just had the lessons all together. So any of the, like I said, the sheets that come separate, I'll have those copied and put into my son's um, folder. And then, like as you can see, this one has a key. So this sheet that I showed you earlier that I didn't know exactly what lesson it went with, I can tell now that it goes with lesson two. So that is one thing that I can go ahead and I'll know where it goes. So I kept all the lessons together and anything else that had to come out, it's now more, um, it's separate and this is more like a course book now. So one thing I did want to say is what I'm going to be doing with my son for his notes and for tracking his progress in the unit is I'm, I got one of these folders there, a clear, covered folder. It has these little uh, pins or like, I don't know what these are called, but it's like clasps, you know, that you push through and I hole punched all the papers and then it has a back. And so I wanted to have something where he could see the cover, he could see what we're working on and then he can write in here. So what I did for my son's science notebook, um, I printed a black and white sheet of the cover of the unit so that he can color it however he wants or he can copy the coloring on there and then I put a table of contents so we can kind of follow along with the lessons that we have. There were a few things that when I was going through the workbook I did create myself so that I could make it a little more straightforward for a first grader. Some of the stuff in here I felt was a little over the head of a first grader, especially if I'm reading and I, he wants to know what things look like. So I kind of went ahead and did the first few lessons and printed a few things. So here I just did this on PowerPoint or you can do it on Word or whatever you use. And I just made two columns, got some pictures of invertebrates, got some pictures of vertebrates. That goes with the first lesson. 
I found a few things on Teachers Pay Teachers. This is one that we'll be using where um, after we go over lesson one, I'll have him do these two pages. We'll pull these out and he will cut these apart and then sort them based on whether they're vertebrates or invertebrates. And then, so I really only got lesson one done. Um, but then what I'm gonna do, and as you can see, I might have to fix the sizing of these. But then what I do did was I saw another YouTuber do this, and I'll have to link her channel below. I'm not exactly, I cannot remember her name. But she, what she did was she did some vocabulary pages where the child was going to draw a picture and then write the definition. So for those, vocabulary words that I showed you earlier on my little vocabulary chart, what I'll do is when we introduce one, I'll have my son copy the main um, definition and then he can draw a picture and I'll give him either a book to look through to find a picture or we'll look up something on the internet and he can use tracing paper or anything like that. So those are a few things that I did and I did um, all the vocabulary words. So as you can see, these are all the vocabulary words for the whole unit. There's other pages that I'll be adding to this as we go, as we, um, as I prepare for upcoming lessons, I'll make sure that I print things out that my son can work on while we're reading and learning. And then anytime there's like an experiment, I might have an observation sheet or something like that. So another thing too is any of these sheets, they will go in there as well. I just plan on copying them so that they're a little more shrunken down so that they fit the holes on the side and they won't like, as you can see, like this one here, this one here goes right to the edge. So I'm gonna shrink this one down so it has some space for the holes and it's not cutting off like on some of my vocabulary sheets. It's not cutting them off here. So that is how I organized my science unit and I plan on organizing the ones in the future. I did get a bunch of these so that at the end of the year, Whenever I'm looking over his you know, school year, I can see and he can see what we've learned in all of our science units. I might even do this for our social studies unit, but I'm not sure, I'll keep you guys posted on that. I did want to show you the pricing for my area, so let me just clear this up a little bit. So we did go to Staples and um, the price for the different things, so getting it spiral bound costs $4.24 in my area. Let's see, is it better? And then laminating letters, so that was all of the sheets that were like the poems and the life cycles. I had five of those and total, they cost $2 each and it cost $9.95 total. And then for the ledger pages, like I said, all the um, those large pages here, so these ones, these pages here, they were $2.79 each and I had four of them and I already cut out two of them so I only had two to show you today and total that came out to eleven sixteen. and then the binding co cover that was what went on the front of this this notebook right here. So that was the clear cover. So all together after tax, it came out to $27.45, so basically $27.50. And for me, that was a pretty good price because now these things are gonna last me a lot longer. However, I don't know what it would have cost if I did it all my own. Maybe it would have cost a lot less. But, you know, I don't have a laminator and don't plan on getting one anytime soon. So that is kind of what I have to do. And that's how we sort our science units. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If it was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about how I set up the arthropods unit from The Good and the Beautiful, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.